This is the PC Gaming Show. For the next two hours, we'll show you new footage and announcements for more than 40 games, including the next game from Dean Hall, the creator of DayZ. <clears throat> hey, gamers. World exclusive debut of gameplay footage for Evil Genius 2. Evil Genius 2. I'm a little Ruthless late. Combat I had a mishap on the way to getting coffee. Space 2. Good guess. Epic battles in a total war saga. Troy. Torchlight 3. What's so coming in the yeah. next chapter of Elite Dangerous okay. Mafia Definitive Edition? A look at New World. Amazon's I can't even do an intro. Open World MMO. Why, hello there, PC Gaming Show. This is great. But yeah, I'm late. I the mishap on the way to get coffee, to like I said. I don't think I missed very much. In again to reveal one of my right? favorite franchises that's coming to PC for the first time ever. If you can name this tune, maybe you'll recognize what it is. See you later in the show. <clears throat> and now your PC gaming show hosts, Day9 and Frankie Ward. All right, so yeah, we're going to see what games are here. I'm going to comment. There, there's no YouTube notification uh, today at all. So... Hello, Internet. Welcome to the 2020 oh, it's, PC it's Day Gaming Nine. Show. I am one of your hosts today, Sean Day9 Plot, and I'm delighted to have you wherever you may be tuning in. Twitch or YouTube He's an adult or Twitter. Now. Welcome to our sixth annual event where we have over two hours of content. 50 plus games we're going to be looking at in the form of reveals, trailers, interviews that we've recorded in the last several weeks. Well, how long Before is this we event, get into Day9? That, though, I want to take a moment to address the ongoing situation in America. While we're glad to be showing you some games today, there are many, many more people fighting for something far, far more important. The struggle against police violence and the systemic oppression of black Americans. I and everyone who works on the PC gaming show each year, we know that black lives matter and this is not a fight that we are willing to stand on the sidelines for. So what can we all do? There's a great many organizations that deserve support right now, and one of them is the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund at NAACPLDF.org. If you want to support this and get some great games in the process, hundreds of developers have joined together at itch.io to create the Bundle for Racial Justice and Equality. It's a pay whatever you want for the bundle, and 100% of the proceeds go to the NAACP Fund and the Community Bail Fund. There's a lot more resources and information we'd like to share. So PC Gamer has created an ongoing list of ways that you can get involved in supporting out. protesters. Videos off That's sync. That's PCGamer.com slash Black Lives Matter. Hang on. Okay. Well, he's not wrong. It's just, it feels moment. weird when corporations... This wouldn't be a PC gaming show. Well, whatever. Anyway, my dear I got the bundle. Frankie Ward. Joining us from There's the some stuff the in internet. there that's pretty good. Welcome, Frankie. Most of it is like, hello. what is it? Hello, Sean, and hello to everyone watching around the world. Hang on, chat. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta restart the thing. Hang on, sorry. There's some good games in the bundle, like, but it's a, a thousand plus games, so. The most games we've ever presented. So, grab your beverage of choice, because it's go time. Thanks, Frankie. And I gotta say, your apartment looks quite a bit more like a music video than mine does. Maybe is I this better? sprung for better lighting. Either way, it's time for the PC Gaming Show. And as I said earlier, 50 plus games. We've been talking to the developers, interviewing them for weeks now. And though it looks kind of empty here, I'm not alone. My beautiful assistant and good buddy DevBot. You may have seen him making his way over here. He is awaiting us. So let's go join him and get the show started. Hilarious, Day9. Absolutely hilarious. All right, DevBot, what do we have for this year's PC Gaming Show? I downloaded 50 game trailers and 10 interviews, Sean, along with a full report of the most secret gaming layer friendly dogs, per your request. Australian Shepherds rank fourth among I don't think robots dogs. can catch COVID-19, oh, right? Well, excellent. Well, what should we play first then? Scanning. Processing. My readings indicate that the audience would like to see buttons. Well, that sounds great. Is that let's what kick it is that the joke? with Valheim, a Viking survival game where you'll fight monsters, craft weapons, build and sail ships on an open ocean, all while exploring a procedurally generated landscape. Show me the game, Devbot. Now loading, Valheim. 
I can't tell if that's like what they're going for with the robot. Like no people in the room but a robot. I don't know, whatever. Anyway. So I have my coffee. Uh oh, oh look. First synchronicity of the stream. I have my coffee. I'm very tired. Um I slept like shit last night. I had a, a really bad headache. I'm waiting for a Monkey Ball 3 reveal. And, um, if I'm out of it right now, it's because I'm gaining my bearings and trying to figure out how to be a human at this time. So... Oof. I'll tell you what, after the PS5 reveal, <clears throat> sorry for the voice crack. All the graphics in those trailers, like most of them, were so epic and good to show off the power that seeing this as an opening trailer, it's just like, wait, what? I mean, it looks like, like, Rust, and Age of Conan, and, um... Yeah. I mean, I get it's going for a lower poly art style. It just, from a distance, it, it looks a little, uh, wacky. I'm gonna lower the volume a bit here. Um, so yeah, like I said in the PS5 show, this is just me being a smartass talking about video games. If you don't want to hear it, if you don't want to hear someone possibly ruin the games that you might like, uh, you, you don't want to watch my stream of this. Quite a while and is just about to come out. I've been following it the whole time, and if a game that features farming, creature collection, dance battles, and bears wearing pants sounds like your cup of tea, then it's time to put the kettle on and enjoy some ooblets. I mean, literally everything I look for in a video game, thanks. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Wait, didn't this come out on the Wii? Oh no, that was Elibits. It's like a 3D Stardew Valley. Okay. EGS exclusive? Probably not for too much longer. Oh. Oh, Xbox One, I guess. Sean, I've selected the next game for the PC gaming show. Well, great, what do you got, DevBot? The game is Torchlight 3, a cherished action RPG franchise that features a number of original playable classes. I was a big star, um, DevBot. Stardew Valley you fan for a while. This and Torchlight 2. In Torchlight 3, you can play as a steam-powered robot, would you? My game selections are entirely objective and determined by an algorithm that shows the audience only what it wants to see. Show me the algorithm, DevBot. The algorithm is... ...proprietary. Okay, well, let's play the Torchlight 3 trailer, and when we're done, I want to talk to one of the Torchlight 3 devs. You know, we don't... Listen, I, I appreciate Day 9 for the most part. I don't know if we need the skits. The PS5 reveal, it was like no skits and just games. That was fine. <laughs> I was okay with that. I don't mean to be a rotten son of a bitch, but... In a world of magic and mystery... Will you choose fame? In a world... Will you choose fortune? Or a VHS filter with scan lines? Yeah, it looks looks like torchlight. Explore remote perilous realms. 
battle hordes of ancient, powerful enemies. Unite with others to claim your fame and glory. Torchlight 3, your legend awaits. Oh, it's uh, early access now? Oh, DevBot, please, please connect me with okay. one of those developers. You got it, Sean. Joining me today to talk about Torchlight 3 is Max Schaefer. Max, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. It's still so now, weird Max, that everyone's Torchlight just like at home. With the alchemist from the Can't original get used Torchlight to that. becoming corrupted and evil. How does Torchlight 3's story tie into the first two? Well, we're in the same world, obviously. We're about a century later now, though. And the, uh, the a Empire century? Is in Wow. Yes, uh, the Empire is in decline, wow. and they've gotten a little lazy, a little comfortable, and a new threat looms on the horizon. So once again, the adventurers will have to battle the Netherim and all the evil baddies threatening the world. In terms of the scope and scale of Torchlight 3, how does it compare to the previous editions? Well, we've expanded quite a bit. Now, first, anyone who's played Torchlight 1 and Torchlight 2 will be comfortable with the mechanics and how to play it and all. But uh, we've we've expanded and let players make their own mark in the world itself. Like you get a customized fort um, oh. that you can decorate, that you can build things in. You can do things that that benefit your whole account, and you can put things in there that are that are useful to other players. And other players will see your fort randomly out in the world. I want to ask a little bit about the. It's classes, a lot of resident sleepers in chat. Can we ban that emo, please? Something like a knight or a mage, but in Torchlight Three, we got the steam-powered robots. We have the rail master <laughs> that can summon trains. Talk to me about not just what some of the classes that players can expect are, but how you even come up with this glorious stuff. <laughs> Well, I think that, that, you know, we've always wanted to avoid going like right down Main Street with our character classes and try to do something interesting. Um, but at the same time, we wanted you to be able to look at them and get a sense uh, and get a kind of an intuitive sense of what they do. And uh, so we've applied that here. We've got some really fun characters, like you said, the uh, fully robotic uh, steam powered robot um, and a guy that summons trains. But we've also got some other cool classes too, a sharpshooter and a dust mage. And, uh, you know, honestly, they're all, they all have new twists and they're all pretty fun to play. In, in terms of the game world itself, how like specifically do the forts get integrated? Like, what does it mean to- I mean, I get why people would be bored during this, but through the yeah. World? Well, between our, our gameplay levels, we have passages. And when you enter the passage, there will often be a waypoint there, but there will also be someone else's fort. So you will see some random person from the world's fort and they will in turn see uh, occasionally randomly your own fort. And it's definitely worth exploring their fort because you can not only use like things like the luck tree, but you can use their enchanting table and whatever recipes they've unlocked to enchant your own items. So it's really worthwhile for you to go check them out. Now pets were a big part of the earlier Torchlight games. What type of pet-based <laughs> entertainment can we expect? We have expanded upon the pet, the pet system. It does all the things you want. It fights alongside you. It sells, Talking about pets. goes and takes your items back to town to sell. Uh, but we've introduced kind of a collection mechanic. So you can find pets out in the wild by defeating bosses and make a whole stable of pets that you, of course, keep in your fort. Now, Max, I know that the Torchlight series has an enormous fan base. For those who are looking to get their hands on Torchlight 3, where can they go and when can they play it? Well, I'm very, very happy to announce that we are available on Steam right now. Right now. Early access for $29.99. Go check it out. It's available eh. right this minute. This is the best kind of answer in the PC gaming show. You can get it now. Once again, Max. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can swing the Thank thirty so bucks for, for, for this us. right now. Once I mean, again, I could, but I, do I want right to? Right now, to get your hands on the early access I like Torchlight though. Torch I do. Light I love Torchlight too. Played a lot of it. Started here on the PC gaming show. Let's I might take check a look it out. What's coming up next? I know about the pets You're and the force now. That's cool. PC gaming show coming up later. An exclusive look at the next game from DayZ creator. Dean Hall, Blanco's another game party, that will never be released and finished. The of Sound Mind and more. Back to you, Sean. Back to you, Sean. Well, hey, everyone. Back to you, Sean. Right time. I know I am, and I know you want to tell me how much fun you're having, but don't shout. The walls are very thick in here. I can see you, though, if you use the PC Gaming Show hashtag on Twitter or Facebook, or the PC Gamer forums, or a Ouija board, or a Messenger Falcon, it looks whatever a little is your broken. desired form of communication. I'm sure you've been seeing many of those comments show up live in the show today. And we want your hottest 280 character take that our merry moderators might just select to be on the How show. How many times can you type poop? For our next segment, in 280 time to characters. head on over to Frankie Ward. 
Elite Dangerous, the space simulation MMO from Frontier has continued to evolve over the past five years. Set in a one-to-one -one recreation of our actual Milky Way galaxy, players forge their own path, build and break alliances, trade, fight and earn the rank of Elite. Join us as we journey into the next era of Elite Dangerous, set to take a giant leap once more. 70 without spaces, 56 with spaces. Cool. So I've never played Elite Dangerous, but I know people love this fucking game, so... I like space, but for some reason I just stayed away from it. Maybe it's scope scared me. Can they de-interlace their videos a little bit better? Or is that just on my end? Spice! It's a mile wide and an inch deep is the problem. Oh. I mean, I could de-interlace this. Yes! East. Wait, no, I can't. Joining me to talk about the next chapter of Elite Dangerous is Piers is Jackson from Frontier Development. John Thanks Hamill, brother us, of Mark John, Hamill. It's good to be here. Now, I have a lot of questions about the trailer we just saw, but... I'm wondering if you can contextualize a little bit for those who haven't played Elite Dangerous. What is it? So I think the best way of um, explaining what Elite Dangerous is is to understand how big it is. We have created a title that's the most complete, authentic space simulation of any game out there, and it's just vast. It's the whole galaxy. You can explore it. You can take your own path. You can be a pilot, a trader, uh, a, a bounty hunter. You can do what you want. You can go where you want, and you can do your own thing. And, and Luke would never be a bounty that hunter. Sort of freedom and the ability for people to tell their own story that I think makes Elite what it actually is. Now, in all the streams that I've been following for Elite Dangerous, there's a lot of gameplay that happens in ships. There's a lot of focus on the economy and trading. In this trailer, though, we saw feet on the ground, which immediately makes me ask... Gonna make an Elite Dangerous what movie, should okay? Expect? What should we glean from the trailer? Oh, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. Ultimately, the, the big new feature that we're looking to release Features, here huh? is the fact that you can now, for the very first time, set foot on our planets. We've created the last addition, really, in, in terms of going from space all the way down to the planet's surface. So now, Wait, now this you can is set a foot, you can explore, thing you can interact do. with the environment. And we've taken the, the mission-based gameplay and the idea of forging your own path and creating your own experience that the space game has, and we've ta transposed that right down onto the planet. For the first time, you'll be able to um, access a whole pile of new planets, all ones with tenuous atmospheres. And so obviously, man's guy. you'll be able to play this in multiplayer. So you'll be able to join up with your friends. You can experience the game from the ship, from an SRV, and finally, finally from one. But oh, wait, wait, wait! If you're both on the same planet, will you really be able to meet up? Planet component transform the existing aspects of Elite Dangerous. I think it gives people uh, a new set of experiences to have. We link all the way from ground to the buggies, the SRVs, all the way up to the spaceships, so that, so that it becomes a holistic event. The, the design actually encapsulates the whole whole experience. What is with the In interlacing? Terms of some of the other God. systems that are on the planets, or various resources or points of interest. What are some of those that might tie back to some of the gameplay that someone would be familiar with? So we have new planets that you can visit. Uh, you can visit old planets, um, and we have refreshed the visuals on them, so you can really set foot. And, and, and be the first to actually make footfall on a new planet. Now, Piers, I have a combo question for you. Elite Dangerous is available right now. Where can players go to play Elite Dangerous, and when can they expect the Odyssey update? So cool you question. Can, uh, you can join in with our community now, playing Elite Dangerous. Um, download it via Steam or go to the Frontiers store or purchase it on console. Uh, we have many, many people playing it. In terms of Odyssey, you can expect to see that next year. I hope you all enjoyed that conversation about Elite Dangerous. It's a treat to see the way the game people say the is game is good. To evolve. Some For people think title, it's a trucker game in space. Sean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but our broadcast is being hijacked by 3D, 3D, 3. Not again. 
Hi there again, PC gamers. It's me, Greg Miller. Maybe you saw me host the Gorilla Collective live stream earlier today. No, I didn't watch. Okay, well, that sucks. Uh, I'll give the PC gaming show back to his usual host in a moment, uh, but I couldn't let anyone smiling. else announce this next trailer, which is a game near and dear to my heart. Let's take a look. Every day, young life to Nessie. I can't wait to get um, two to three hundred emails about me having to stream this game. Just, just don't. I'm good. Boost, please. Play for some Persona people. Persona 4 Golden is available the, uh, now sequences. on Steam. Uh, if you haven't played this, now you have no excuse. Persona 4 Golden is a masterpiece, I, ladies and gentlemen. I have an excuse. Uh, the story, the action, the characters. This is something you have to go get right now. Uh, it's been awesome to see Atlas Games make their way onto the PC. I'm glad this one is finally here. Anyway. I better hand the show back over to Sean before he gets mad at me. See you later. I'm too PC busy gamers. playing DMC2. Well, that was weird. I thought this live stream was supposed to be secure. I'm analyzing the security breach now, Sean. I have a beta sure sequence I've been working on. Would you like to see it? Well, all right then. While right. we get this sorted out, let's head on over to Frankie. Our next trailer reveals an all-new psychological horror game coming to PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X early next year. In Sound Mind will challenge your expectations as it ushers you through the deepest corners of your psyche. It sounds like every night before I go to sleep, honestly. The game also features a chilling original soundtrack by The Living Tombstone. Courtesy of the indie outfit We Create Stuff and publisher Modus Games, Let's take a look at In Sound Mind. He's, he's, he's a dude. They say Nightmare House Two. Mind. The mod. A locked door that traps you inside it. But once you find the key to your wow. terror, fear will no longer exist. What a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, there were some fun mannequins in Nightmare House 2 as well. All my thoughts are burning. I might be interested in this. Play the debut demo now on hey Steam. I'm I may. Producer at we create stuff. There's Tombstone on the left. Hey, Tombstone here. We're the developers who brought you Nightmare House 2, and now we're back. We've partnered with Modus Games and The Living Tombstone, and we're working on a new indie horror game, In Sound Mind. Demo is now out on Steam. Let us know what you think. Thanks. Thank you. So hey, DevBot, how did you get here today anyways? Well, Sean, my sleep state was interrupted when I realized I was late to this year's PC gaming show. So naturally, <laughs> I panicked. I had to realize that I had to reach our undisclosed broadcasting location before you began the show. I tried some back roads in the desert. History. Four, three, 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 it was discovered. I tried to hitchhike. But ever since the 1991 documentary Terminator 2, no one in Los Angeles trusts robots. Well, wait, 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 wait. What about Johnny Five? You never saw a short short that circuit? Point, I was already right outside our secret location. Cool. Hey, let's take a look at our next trailer. Airborne Kingdom loading.
Reading street. D, 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 engage. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, is this besiege, but, but you're a, a space? Oh, wait, wait, I built shitty things worse than this in besiege. Vinny, are you doing that? No. The 4D, 3D, 3? No, no, no. Uh, oh. Well, it's a shame, because that looks kind of neat, whatever that is. You might be surprised to know that I enjoy real-time strategy games, and that's why I'm excited for our next trailer. It's Dwarfheim, a cooperative RTS, where up to three players can split up the work of building, mining, and fighting, working together to build defenses, machinery, and traps, train armies to fend off deadly trolls, Wait a minute, an RTS game? The Dwarfheim demo is live what? right now on Steam. Let's see what the game is all about. Ever since the fall, Dwarven clans live scattered across Agartha. Ah, Scottish dwarves. They toil every day in the dark and dirt. They try to protect what little they have from rival clans. And the vile creatures that roam these lands. Your clan these graphics is insane, man! To lead your people. Choose your classes, gauge your builders and miners to expand your kingdom, or take up arms with your warriors to protect our town halls and conquer your enemies. Bring us to victory! Man, what a shame Bring the RTS genre just doesn't see a lot of love lately. It's like they're not going to give good budget to RTS game. But anyway, uh, I like the concept where each player has their own set of shit to worry I'm about. Sean, That's kind of neat. And now, let's take a look at the lineup of games and game updates coming from indie publisher New Blood Interactive. 4D, 3D, 3. Dusk. Medieval. Whatever this is. Venus. Venus the game. Mortis. Cool. Dusk is great, by the way. Recommend it. A medieval, I think, is pretty good. I haven't played much of it, but I, I liked what I played. Ob obviously, <laughs> Faith is just fantastic. Fortunate spacemen. Unfortunate game name. Looks decent, though. I played this, didn't I? Yeah, I played this. Poor Faith didn't get its own segment, but, you know. I want to show the graphics. That's quite a lineup from New Blood, and with us now is the New Blood CEO, Dave Oshry, to talk about it. Dave, what the hell was that all about? Yes. Yeah, so we got a lot going on, right? I mean, some guys come out here, they show like some cinematic trailer and they tell you it's coming out in a year. Can't curse, this uh, is the internet. six games and you could play all of them. Right now. We couldn't afford to do a cinematic trailer if we wanted to, right? So yeah, Dusk, uh, now with mods, check them out at duskmods.com. There's all kinds of crazy shit. 
uh, a medieval <laughs> now with RTX. DLSS 2.0 is coming. Maximum action, new levels are coming. New Maximum features, action, new guns. Boogaloo. Unfortunate Spaceman is now completely free to play. F it, why not? Check that one out. 16 player co op. It's crazy. It's like the thing in space. Faith, of course. If you don't know about Faith, now you know. Ultra Kill are but, but new. I, we uh, don't know if we didn't play it. It just says Mortis like on your shirt. Like Devil May Cry, The Quake. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's about. And then, of course, Gloomwood. If you like games like Thief, System Shock, Resident Evil, then I think Gloomwood is definitely, definitely, definitely the game for you. Where can we go to learn more? So, uh, you could check out Dusk at notfortnite.com. <laughs> I believe it's notaction.com. Uh, maximum action at shootyboom.com. Uh, unfortunate spaceman at deaderspace.com. That's dead er space what? .com. They got uh, all these domains. At Gary loves you .com. Gary. Ultra kill at devilmakequake.com. <laughs> and then of course Gloomwood. At Are you kidding me? Guns.com. Uh, yeah, that's all we got. Six games. You can play them all right now. We love you. And we hate money. Thanks. I Dang. like. I you Let's got me. I'm a customer for life now. Thank you, Sean. Now tell me, PC gamers, have you ever wanted to rewrite history? Not your browser history, that's easy and absolutely vital, but how sure. about something grander? Like discovering America, mastering Wait, Fight Granddad or announced for PC? A couple of hundred years earlier. Humankind is an upcoming historical strategy game where you'll be combining up to 60 broke different the chat. cultures to create a civilization I know what I did. that's as unique as you are. And as with all of their previous titles, Amplitude is asking the community to participate in the development of Humankind to help make it the best game that it can be. Let's see how they're inviting PC gamers to help build this worldly game. The best games, bro. But it turns out our players don't know how to dev games. They do not know how to program, most of them. What, what is this version? Wow, it's funky. I don't know if I love it or hate it. I kind of love it. That sounds like... Oh, man. I, now I'm thinking about 2001, the porn odyssey. I mean, there is a close-up on a bone. Sorry. I have a beta sequence I've been working on. Would you like to see it? Well, you heard the trailer. You need to go to opendev.gamestogether.com so you can be one of the very first humans to get your hands on humankind. Amplitude Studios' upcoming historical strategy game. And now for something a little different. Why don't you join me in my chambers? Come on. Come on. Please repeat. Nude. Of all the subcultures and communities that make up PC gaming, modders have arguably had the biggest impact. My next guest is Dean Hall, a designer who started out as a modder and eventually helped lay the foundation for two of the most popular genres on PC, Survival and Battle Royale. Let's take a look at the next game from Rocketworks revealed here on the PC Gaming Show. It's Icarus. Not Kid Icarus. Don't care. Want Kid Icarus. I, I hate to be, like, a cynical about this, you know, but this dude... This dude don't release game. So I don't know if this is ever gonna come out, but, uh, you know. Okay, it's another No Man's Sky. <laughs> okay, hang on a minute. I see, I see what's... Okay. Also the music. Very Hans Zimmer. Interstellar. Church organ. It's- it's Rust? It's Spaceman Rust with weird fucking animals?
But now you need oxygen management. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I like games like this because I enjoyed Rust for quite a while. Joining me to talk about Icarus is Dean Hall. Dean, thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. It's great to be here. So, Dean, you're making another survival-focused game. What makes Icarus different from other survival titles? Well, I think if you think about your first hour in DayZ, your first hour in Minecraft, really what we're trying to do is capture that and then basically build a game where you can do that over a long period of time and you can progress through the survival experience. So it was really getting back to the roots of what a survival game is and what makes those uh, moments that you get in them really intense and emotional. If you can just walk me through like the basic loop, if I just open up the game, do I start out on the ship itself? If you think about the orbital station as your apartment in GTA, you can invite your friends in and prepare for what we call a drop. And then you select a prospect. And the big challenge of the game, uh, and the way to fail it, I guess, is to run out of time on the drop. Let's say I'm on a 30-minute mission. I have a particular resource I've set out to snatch up. How does the gameplay of that 30-minute period different differ from other survival areas games? and planets? I suppose there were three key things that I felt needed to be addressed before I made another survival game. The first was the ability to scale. By breaking your experience over months and years into sessions, um, that allowed us to address scale. So you still can do all the things that you do in a normal survival game, building, building bridges, roads, all those kinds of things. But you're doing it with a medium term focus. The second was pacing and clear direction, which is helped very much Confused. by the structure that we're putting around the session. And the last one is really focusing in on those core survival mechanics, which I really feel is the whole reason that survival as a genre connects so emotionally with players. Do you ever see each other? I guess I was a little surprised to hear that there are 20 minute drops as well as multi-day drops. What, what are the sort of time ranges we're looking at? Are there different like categories and tiers of drop length? Yeah, so it really depends on your level as you progress through the game. So early on, we're really just introducing you to uh, more safe environments. So say a daytime drop that only lasts 20 minutes. You're only gonna be facing the game during the day. Um, as you progress on, you can take on and get access to prospects that I don't have, know if there's a huge market uh, for something like this windows, right now. But that means you're getting a cycle of day and night. And night, particularly for most of our biomes, is definitely the most dangerous. I want to ask a little bit about what failure means in Icarus. I mean, in the trailer there was someone that fell down and you just... It really is content. So, you know, we're making the game free to play because we wanted to maximize the number of people that play it. And we're acutely yeah. aware uh, a number of our, our former staff are ex-Grinding Gear Games, uh, who made Path of Exile, very talented in the free-to-play area. So we're uh, very cognizant of how much content we need to provide gamers. So at the moment, okay. we're really sort of heading into that. Well, Dean, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Awesome. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Once again, that was Dean Hall. I have Rocket comments. Works for the upcoming survival game. I just don't know if I'd be into it. For our next game, let's head to Frankie. I feel like half the fun of survival is the other players, and it seems like if you're when doing you're missions, you're just fighting villain, rats. It's important I don't to have know. your own sense of style. What? Evil cat psychics are so twenty. Is that thing real? Stuff? Or is is it alive? Yeah, it's alive. It moved its head. How would you design a supervillain fortress? Would you build a pool filled with laser sharks, or, or would you just give all the home appliances RGB lighting? Here's the world exclusive first gameplay footage of Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Wow, that is a good hamster. Did you see that? It looked right at the camera at the exact moment it had to. <laughs> a, a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a guinea pig. I never played the evil genius, so I don't know. Just gonna look.
And then there will be a James Bond that tries to infiltrate. It's a shame that the mobile game comment is being tossed around for games that have, like, an art style that's a little less photorealistic. I, you know, mobile games don't look this decent, most of them. But I guess that's also, you're not, I mean, I get where it's coming from. A lot of mobile games do have this art style. So, it's a catch-22, I suppose. Unless this is literally just a mobile game. N no, it's gonna be on Steam. It's just used so much. Something, like, very similar to that is used we are all the time. To see the first official gameplay footage for Godfall on PC. Counterplay Games is going to give us a guided tour of the battle for Aperion. And keen observers will notice that this is running in Unreal Engine 5. That's why those shiny sets of armor look oh so gorgeous. You can go on over to the Epic Game Store and wishlist it now, or get more information on Godfall before it releases this holiday season. But for now, let's take a look. This is the- oh, right, yeah this thing again. Hello, my name is Keith Lee, and I am the game director for Godfall. On behalf of Counterplay Games, and I, we are very excited to share gameplay with you today and to offer you a glimpse a into the yes. mystical yeah. world of Godfall. Please enjoy. Godfall is still in development, I'm robot. so some things will change and improve in the final product, including visuals and performance. Good morning, Paul. Godfall is set in a brand new high fantasy universe filled with heroic knights, arcane magic, and forbidden realms. The world is split up into the elemental realms of earth, water, air, and fire. You play a Valorian knight, a godlike warrior able to equip valor plates, the legendary armor sets that transform Is it just me or is this very cinematic? Masters of melee combat. As you adventure through the realms, you'll get to tear through enemies to challenge a mad god who awaits you at the top. Throughout your journey, as in you'll very find jerky, ancient valor plates lost in time, each with their own characteristics and long history. Now let's talk about gameplay in Godfall. First, our team wanted to do something different. We wanted to combine action RPG loot progression with third person melee combat to create what we think is a whole new genre, the looter slasher. The oh. game is therefore one part gear driven and one part player skill driven. In other words, not only do we want you to find exquisite weapons with powerful loot traits, but we also want you to have that feeling of accomplishment for mastering the wide set of combat mechanics. You probably don't want to really use really the word accomplishment. Combat. After the, the uh, Star what Wars you're debacle. At now is a mid boss fight. A tougher challenge, which we'll have to leave for another day. Anyway. Please check out the Godfall channels on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. When, when, uh, Thank you so much when devs say new genre, and my we'll brain you more soon. cringes. Now next up, and then I get, you know, I lose subscribers because my brain cringed. Shooters, they think of games like Doom, Quake, and Duke Nukem. Our next trailer shows a project that celebrates the proud heritage of sci-fi FPSs while taking advantage of some very modern visual effects. It looked like fine. Glorious. It looked fine for what it was, in my opinion. From Bounding Box Software and Humble Publishing, this is Proteus. Just fine. What is this? I saw some crusts. I like that. Boy, these old school shooters are really getting fucking heavy revivals lately. Uh, 
it, it's it's so doom it hurts, <laughs> honestly. You know, if the formula is is sound and um, it's fun to play, that's cool. Final Fantasy Tactics. Advance, yeah, pretty much. More like Wild Arms? Okay. I, I never played Final Fantasy Tactics. Fate Tactics is set to scratch that isometric combat itch that I know a lot of us have been feeling ever since we played Final Fantasy Tactics back in the 90s. All right, but he said we're it. not done with humble games yet. Their lineup, as it turns out, isn't all that humble. We're going to take a look at two more games from them. Project Wingman, a jet fighter game featuring RPG elements and VR support. And rounding things out is Carto from Sunhead Games, a gorgeous top-down puzzler. Let's take a look. I mean, you know, the, the the impetus is to joke about its, you know, simplicity and everything, but at least it's trying something different. It's not like the same game over and over and over and over again for the presentation. We've seen a lot of different genres. Tally ho. <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Oh no. I mean, it's no Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, but... Hey, Devbot. Have you ever wondered what Gordon Freeman's voicemail message sounds like? Sean, that is an intriguing inquiry. However, something is wrong. I'm receiving an external transmission. Yes. Why does this keep happening, Devbot? What's with the security? Have you upgraded to Service Pack 2 yet? Transmission is coming from a powerful space satellite. Greetings, Greetings. PC Gaming Show. It is oh, it's I, Kane again. <laughs> your Supreme Leader, Kane. I am commandeering this broadcast to deliver an important mission briefing. You must capture the GDI base marked at these coordinates. This is a strategically significant for. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. It's me, Joe Coogan. And I can take over this broadcast because I do what I want. Look. You know Command & Conquer has been a major part of your life. It's certainly been a big part of mine. It's out. We, we, Command & Conquer good. Remastered Collection recently launched for PC, and it is an awesome way to relive this classic game with a bunch of new bells and whistles. I mean, who doesn't like 4K graphics, quick matches in multiplayer, or modding, am I right? I personally want to send a big shout out to all you PC gamers who have kept the legacy of Kane alive over these last 25 years. I mean, I, I live in death, I guess. Thanks for letting me interrupt, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. For the glory of Nod! E EA can afford that cameo, just Not to interrupt PC the show with an ad. Any rare action figures. Perhaps you're one of the lucky owners of an out-of-print collectible, something you'd never trade away in a million years. Our next game is a celebration of toys and art. On its surface, a game about collecting, customizing, and trading, but it's also a highly social playground for creativity. One where you can make your own levels and to interrupt with your the ads with an ad. Play many games <laughs> and trade together. This is Blanco's Block Party.
Wait a minute, did he say Funko? Did my brain just like wipe out the word Funko? Legend tells of a place where everyone comes together to play and dance and race and shoot and jump and fly with jetpacks or maybe bat wings and there's lava and a mountain made of junk food. Well, we went from one to 10 in a span of like 30 seconds. And have your own adventures. Sorry, five you seconds. Charge, where you can make your very own games with your very own rules. And all your friends can come and play. Like this one here. Yep, them too. And I don't know what that dude is. But he is cool. What? They're all toys? Come to life. And I can actually play with them and own them all. That's f***ing sweet. But you see, this place what is this trailer? at all. It's a party. Blanco's the inside look at Blanco's block party is Jamie Jackson from Mythical. Jamie, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I would love if you could just address what is Blanco's? Blanco's Who is, is Blanco's? Game about Why is Blanco's? Kind of coming to life and where they go when a human leaves the room. But it's also more than just a game. It's a place for content creators and gamers and collectors to come together and, content hang out creators. and build the worlds and games that they really want to play in. And you can have as many as your friends come and hang out with you as you want. But you could also drop the toys in. So the first toy you can play with is one called it's a shooting mechanic. We've got like a unicorn rocket launcher that fires ice creams. Uh, we got like a cactus <laughs> grenade launcher that fires these little <laughs> cactus balls. So it's all about kind of like arcade fun shooter stuff. And you Let's eat some pork chops and it's all oh, right. You can, squads, you can do a bunch of stuff with it. You can even just have it free for all. Some other stuff we're going to be dropping is race toys. So you could just do point to point. You could build this super sweet like platformer and just go A to B. You could do laps. And then another one is because Blankos, they all survive on good vibes. That's kind they of didn't, they didn't. Good so vibes. Do, like, they survive on good vibes. survive on good vibes. Collection. And what's kind of super cool is all of those toys work with each other. So you could build a race. Hello, fellow kids. Guns in it, and it can be a race, but you can pick up guns on the way and try and knock each other out. So you have these huge flexible tools, this community focus. We've also seen in games like Fortnite, these in-game events. Are, are these kinds of things that you think Three, will show up in Blankos as well? Engage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we felt that from the beginning of development, that Blankos wasn't just this place for players to go and build and create their own worlds, but it was a place for us to be able to share with them different content, whether that's a music concert, whether it's a movie trailer, um, you know, whether it's something no one's seen yet. But absolutely, that. We're definitely thinking about that kind of stuff. Well, talk to me about the number of different designs. Like, where are these designs well, Which coming YouTubers from? Which YouTubers are in there? there? We're not talking about numbers of, in season one just yet, but we are talking about the artists. So um, we're really stoked we've been able to work with some of the, some of my favorites uh, that I've been buying the vinyl toys of over the years. So John Paul Kaiser is a great artist from the UK. I ended up mm -hmm. buying some of his toys in New York about six years ago, and now we get to work together and bring his toys to life in the game, which has been great fun. James Broman, who I think just kind of really epitomizes vinyl toy design, just those clean vector based lines. And my, one of my personal favorites, um, is Pete Fowler, who for me was kind of one of the grandfathers of vinyl toy design. I know people are going to want more information. They're going to want to know when they can play Blancos, when they can see more. Where do they go for that? If you want to keep just up to date with things, go and check out Blancos.com. You can register there right now so you can, you know, secure your account name and, and get ready for launch. Um, we're going to be launching end of the year, so not too far away now, but we're also going to be starting to look for our beta at some point soon as well. So if you get registered, we might be able to get you in that. Jamie from Mythical, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, guys. If you're a Funko Once Pop again, fan and want Funko adjacent gameplay, party. this Let's is for you. What's coming up next at this year's PC Gaming Show? You're watching the PC Gaming Show, presented by PC Gamer. Oh, hello, Stay Wayne tuned June. For more trailers, announcements, and footage coming up later. We celebrate the 20th anniversary of A Total War. What's next in Escape from Tarkom? The reveal of horror strategy game. Hey, I played that for like three hours. Awards. And more. Back to you, Frankie. The PC is the birthplace of space flight action games. And our next project, Everspace, Everspace 2, 2, expands on that tradition mm -hmm. with its gorgeous handcrafted universe. Been very excited for the this. The focus here is on exploration and dogfighting, with alien species standing in the way of outfitting your ship with unique modules, weapons, and devices. 
And as we're about to see in this next trailer, combat won't just take place in the cold vacuum of space, but also the atmospheres of planets themselves. Here's Everspace 2. Did he really say Tarkom? Escape from Tarkom. So yeah, this this one, it's no longer a roguelite, and everything is like crafted, which is cool because the gameplay in the first one was great, but it got a little bit grindy and it was very difficult. So really, really curious about how this is gonna go. But yeah, Everspace One is definitely one of my favorite uh, Steam games that I played in the past, you know, five or six years. Put a lot of hours into that. Got the Steam, uh, the Switch version, which was like crust space, but still good. Space shoot, except above a planet. Which, by the way, in Everspace 1, you could not go to the planet surface. Or the planet core. Oh, okay. See, look, you, you can go to the planet core here. in two days. Yeah, it's a, I'm looking forward to that. Back in my day when the game was the game. Excuse me. He excuse the fuck me. Was that a Yoda? You gotta get rid of that screen shake. Holy fuck. Ink you Lenati. PC gamers, I'm sure you'll agree. If a horse shows up at your door and you don't remember ordering, a horse. Horse. It's oh, horse. Best to keep the door shut. One of the coolest things about a Total War Saga Troy, the next game from Creative Assembly, is that it will enable players to experience multiple different versions of how the iconic battle went down, including several explanations for what that mythical horse actually was. I'll get the door while you watch the latest trailer. Peggy 16. Oh, silver-tongued Odysseus, there is only one response to another game I've not played. And that is war. In Total War Saga Troy, you can rewrite the events of one of the greatest conflicts ever told, the Trojan War. As Odysseus besieged the legendary city of Troy in three ingenious and equally devastating ways, all based around prominent themes Looks nice visually. throughout the ages as to what the iconic Trojan horse really resembled. The walls of this city may appear to be mighty, but no defenses are impregnable. Using gargantuan siege towers, take the fight to the walls. You can do anything. Force the Trojans atop and force them back into their pitiful city. The enemy are unaware of your presence. Position your troops to retain your advantage once the attack begins. Sneak troops into the city in a vast, horse-headed vessel. <laughs> Never thought I would have heard that in my life. Use guerrilla tactics to sabotage the unbreachable city gates, leaving the Trojan warriors defenseless, allowing the Achaean soldiers to begin raising the city to the ground. 
Their walls have been breached. Even the greatest defenses cannot stand against nature's might. In a land ravaged by earthquakes, patience is rewarded. Send your troops forward. Troy is yours for the taking. Is there, wait, magic? Or do you just wait for things to, like, degrade? The war that will define the ages. Experience the legend of Troy this summer. Victory will make you immortal. Fucking AGS That and was that. a Total War Saga Troy, which we'll get to play in 2021. And hey, speaking of sneaking in big surprises, a master of Segway. This year, we've teamed up with Intel to build a legendary custom computer inspired by art, weaponry, and the artifacts found in the game. DevBot. Did you see that tweet? Nostalgia is back at the bottom right? there. Affirmative. Where did it go? Sean, I have a soft spot for Bronze Age computers. Well, great. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit more? Can do, Sean. Behold, PC gamers. This is Add sequence voice to you. The 10th gen Intel Core i9 10900K processor. This 10 core flagship CPU is built for maximum game performance and overclocking, especially useful in epic strategy games like A Total War Saga Troy. The build also features a top of the line GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Also on the ASUS motherboard are a spacious 4 terabytes of fast storage and 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. The unit is powered by a platinum certified Corsair 1200 watt Jesus. power supply, and temperatures are kept at a nominal level thanks to nine RGB fans running along. Jesus! The Look at all these big numbers. Affected a heat conduction, but according to my readings, aesthetically pleasing. Look at this fucking thing. It's called love. PCs are more than specs, they're a passion. When we build a PC, we form a relationship with that piece of hardware. We wanted to show you every step of that process. For this build, we enlisted a master craftsman, Brian Carter, a PC modder with over a decade and a half of experience. PC Gamer and Intel have created a four part Wait, can we win that or buy Brian it? Brian as he created this epic artifact. DevBot, cue it up. Hey, my name is Brian Carter, and I've been building custom PC mods for over 16 years. I'm working with Intel and a Total War Saga Troy on a very special custom PC project that we're thrilled to debut at the PC Gaming Show. Join me in a four-part video series as I take you through each stage of the scratch build process. We begin with the inspiration and design phase, where we figure out how to take the amazing design assets from a Total War Saga Troy and functionalize them to house our best-in-class components like the 10th gen Best Intel Core i9-10900K processor. Then I'll show you how I assemble, finish, and test this one-of-a-kind PC. A big thank you to Intel and Creative I mean, on Assembly some level, I, I might want to like, watch that and enjoy watching like it. it. I don't know, it's kind of oh, fun to watch it shit like that. so good, and I have some good news. Episode one is available now, and I have even better news. You can win this even PC if it's from ugly. DevBot's loving clutches. Head on over to PCGamer.com slash Intel PC to learn more and enter for a chance to win. <laughs> and with that, it's time to return to more PC gaming show action with the fantastic Frankie. Last year, Remnant from the Ashes challenged gamers to take on monstrous creatures in a post-apocalyptic world. Today, we're excited to announce the biggest update yet for the game, upcoming DLC that will conclude this thrilling saga. The fate of humankind is at stake. It's time to bring an end to the root once and for all. This is the world reveal of Remnant from the Ashes, subject 2923, available August 20th what did, on what PC, did you say? Xbox One, and PS4. Did you say... <laughs> they say hope is what makes us human. Hope also let us think we'd won. But the root have another gate somewhere. Another hole we have to plug in our sinking civilization. Maybe the root's not the only thing we need to worry about. Okay. Okay, there's a giant deer man, elder god. There's scrungles, the orcs. What is going on? <laughs> what the fuck? 
was that? It was a mole rat king. But there's guns? The new remnant from the Ashes content looks fantastic. And you know what else is fantastic? I Hearing the opinions of strangers from the internet. Nothing makes my day. Oh, they as fixed much it. as hearing what's inside your mind. So please use hashtag PC Gaming Show on whatever your platform of preference may be, and you just might have your comment show up live on the show. Now for our next title, we have to look at classic remasters. Capcom has been updating the original Resident Evil games, and in the same vein, 2K is now updating Mafia. The original oh, Mafia man, you got me excited. is getting a full definitive edition remaster with the original game, the Twink Drainer was Mafia, one of the names of the people on the tweets. Remake with of course support. fucking chat noticed it. We got a brand new trailer for you. So let's take a look at Lost Heaven two decades later. Hey, Tommy, Detective Norman. How long you been in town? Trey years. Trey years. They handed you the Morello case. Right out of the gate. That's what the paper says, ain't it? My relic. And what's it to you? The case must be getting pretty cold by now. Or you got something might warm it up. Yeah. I might have something. Look at these guys. Oh my god. Look at these guys, Jen. Interlace your fucking video, please. Thomas. Thomas Angelo, sir. Tastes like fucking sawdust, like a walnut. Man, Dev Bot, after a beautiful trailer like that, I gotta know, do you have any contacts in the Mafia? Sean, I have left that life behind me. I'm programmed not to form relationships with organized crime. However, I can call one of the developers of Mafia Definitive Edition. Well, fantastic. Let's ring him up, DevBot. Joining me to talk about Mafia is the president and CCO of Hangar 13. It is Hayden Blackman. Hayden, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So for people who haven't played the original Mafia, which is a 2002 release, talk to us about this game. Mafia The Definitive Edition is a complete ground-up remake of Mafia from 2002, which is a seminal game that really launched the Mafia franchise. And in Mafia, you take on the role of Tommy Angelo, who is a cab driver that falls in with the mob during He's pissed the 1930s, about Uber. actually during the height of Prohibition, in a city called Lost Heaven, which is loosely based on Chicago. And as a member of the Salieri mm. crime family, he really gets embroiled in a war with the Morello crime family, and we kind of explore that story and Tommy's evolution from cab driver to a uh, respected member of the Mafia. I feel like in the last 10 years, we've seen HD editions, remasters that are more graphical updates, but my understanding is that this is far Old more German. than just a, <laughs> a little new bit. coat of paint on a game from 2002. Really. Talk to me about what a remake means. Everything was rebuilt, so every asset, uh, every cinematic was, was reshot, and, and um, all the gameplay was completely redone. Now, we've kept all the same big beats from the original game. The story is the same uh, for the most part. All the big plot points are there. All the missions are, are there and represented. Except Tommy shoots uh, first again, this time. Everything was completely rebuilt uh, from the ground up. In order to kind of meet the expectations of, of today's gamers and take advantage of today's technology. The location in pretty much every open world game is a central character. In 2002, we have seen a ton of gameplay changes between then and now, 2020. Can you talk a little bit about some of the ways you've updated the open world setting and maybe some of the new mechanics that players can expect? So we do that a number of different ways. You know, one, we looked at how populated can we make it and we took some of the kind of um, world interactions and some of the things that we did with, um, you know, uh, crowds and non-player characters and, and um, other kind of city life from Mafia 3 and put them into- to, uh, The future you know, of Mafia gaming is crowd technology. Um, but we also looked at, are there ways for us to kind of redesign the city so it's more fun to drive around? You know, uh, do we need to widen the streets? Do we need to make sure that there's not as many, um, you know, 90 degree turns so that uh, you can kind of coast around corners? And um, as we capture the, the feel of the, the vehicles, are there things that we want to do to make sure that the roads have, you know, grip or they're slick in the rain? And so 
Um, that I think brought a lot of life to it as well because most of the way that you engage with the city is, is through driving. I mean, speaking of rebuilding, mm, it looks the ground visually up, nice. I gotta ask you about the cinematics. I mean, they looked gorgeous in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, what was the process of rebuilding all of those cinematics? Um, for us, it was really, you know, how do we recreate these, uh, again, taking advantage of some of the cutting edge stuff that we've been doing at Hangar 13. So, you know, we have, you know, really great um, uh, facial scanning and, and likeness capture technology. Yeah, not actual gameplay, cap, but uh, facility. You know, the screenshots, uh, so I would really assume. To take advantage Are those of real? Um, for, you know, the definitive edition. So we did go in and we rewrote all the cinematics, uh, again, to add some of that language and add some of that um, character development and maybe some of that clarity that we were going for. With without losing the essence of, of each moment. Well, now it's time for my favorite question. Yeah. When can we play Mafia Definitive Edition and where can people go right now to learn more? Sure, so uh, we are looking at an August 28th launch date and uh, we still you know, have a ways to go and, and we're, we're working on that kind of final polish push right yeah. now. But I'm really confident, really bullish in, in that date right now. If you want more information, you can go to mafiagame.com. That's real soon. After seeing the trailer, I personally am hyped, Hayden. Thank you so much for joining us at this year's PC gaming show. Once again, mafiagame.com. For our next title, it's time to head on over to Frankie. Sean, next up, it's one of those games that looks so pretty, we just had to show it to you. Ever wondered what Slay the Spire might be like with Tim Burton at the helm? Not well, really, Lord but could be the answer. good thing we got rid of Resident Sleeper. It's been totally developed by Cyanide and Leica Studio and sees you building a team from storybook psychos like Dracula, Bloody Mary and Baron Samadhi. Makes all the more sense when you realize you're being employed by the devil himself, a job that has my name written all over it. The game is out this October, and we've got a brand new gameplay trailer. So what the fuck is this Hi, gonna everyone, be? And welcome to this exclusive gameplay reveal of our new title, Rogue Lords. Development is moving forward, and we are very excited to share some in-game elements and combat mechanics. Uh, uh, darkest Dungeon Rogue a bit? Rogue Lords is a rogue-like game where you play as the devil. <laughs> you have to build your team with legends of evil and lead them in runs through multiple events and fights. After a terrible defeat years ago, you're finally coming back with your most faithful disciples to wreak havoc and terror in a world unbalanced after your long absence. The combat is turn-based and strategic. You will need to build your set of skills through your run to be prepared for any threat. Analyze your enemy's next attacks and create combos to secure victory. Every skill costs action points. You should think how to make the best of them each turn. When one of your disciples becomes vulnerable, your own health bar is exposed, which is persistent during the entire run. If your health is reduced to zero, your run is finished. I see. Yeah. In Rogue Lords, you are the devil, so you don't have to play by the same rules as mortals. Some of the visuals the look pretty nice. Tricky, you can use souls to play with the interface and change an enemy health bar, for example. This is an expensive trick to use, but very powerful and useful in the most difficult fights. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more info coming soon. See you next time. That's uh, some neat if stuff in there, I guess. If you're you know they're known for we'll see. two things. Procedurally generated worlds and permadeath. Our next game, Unexplored 2, puts an interesting twist on these ideas. What if your character's demise changed the game world itself, altering it for all of your future playthroughs? From developer Ludo Motion and publisher Big Sugar, this is Unexplored 2, The Wayfarer's Legacy. One call upon to be the next Wayfarer. Will you answer? One task to take your place in a long line of heroes. Will you waver? One challenge to forge your legacy out of strife, hardship, and magic. Will you be victorious? Wayne June's getting a lot of work lately, huh? This is our world. It is your burden. From beyond the gate into the first valley, there is no return. Will you be ready? The latest update for Dauntless is the most ambitious chapter yet for this online free-to-play RPG. I, I kind of in Call that of the Void, okay. players unravel a mystery surrounding an ancient civilization, Until culminating in a showdown with a new otherworldly behemoth. 
And as a nice little bonus, if you go to PlayDauntless.com right now and use the code PCGamingShow2020, you can get some free in-game rewards. Nice. Let's take a nice. closer look at this update that's available now in Dauntless. This is Call of the Void. What was Dauntless again? <laughs> was it like, uh, J Monster Hunter? Okay. A lot of dark blue and purple on this stream here today, on this here stream. There's still more games to come on the PC gaming show. Oh, no, I want Here's this to end. <laughs> I'm tired. Take a look at Blightbound, the new action RPG from Devolver. A special collection of exciting independent games coming to PC. Back to you, Frankie. There aren't many games about I didn't being sleep very well last which night, chat. Among Trees caught my eye. In this first person didn't eat lunch either sandbox, yet. you get to explore a colorful, breathing world that's full to the brim with life. Just don't go wandering around like Snow White. Wild, deadly beasts share this painted world with you and you'll want to move carefully to avoid their bitey bits. Produced by a three-person team out of Sweden, this project demonstrates the creative power of independent creators on PC. Okay. I think we have we seen this before or are there just three separate deer games in development right now it's not a, it's not a deer game it's firewatch 2 dear god have mercy build a cabin in the <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> Build a cabin in the woods. Go fishing. Enjoy really nice lighting. Now, if you're like me, you've drunk your fair share of potions in video games over the oh. years. But you've probably never stopped to consider the business side of these magical elixirs. In Potionomics, you're a witch who must save her potion shop from the clutches of greedy loan sharks, bartering and haggling with a slew of demanding customers. Let's take a closer look at this unique fantasy concept. Moonlighter, Reseteer. Potion seller. I need your strongest potions. The animations are, are pretty high quality so far. Even if it's just like poses. Oh god, what is that thing? That was Walrus from Tamanachi. Wait, so it's a card game where you sell potions and don't fight monsters? Uh...
I, I have some interest in this. Uh, coming soon to Windows PC, and now is that a lot of time EGS exclusive? Fixated on finding the best, the most powerful gear. But in our next game, Mortal Shell, things are a little different. You aren't scouring a dungeon looking for a plus one sword. You're exploring a shattered world for the remains of defeated warriors that you then possess like a ghost. These are the mortal shells, and they're much more than mere pieces of armor and stats. Each one has a complicated backstory, a play style, and an identity that might give you mixed feelings about the body you're occupying. Coming later this year exclusively to the Epic Games Store on PC, let's take a look at this gorgeous and brutal action game, Mortal Shell. Uh, I foresaw this. Scratch sigils on the walls. Counted the days until you'd gone. A million eyes peering across time and space, yearning for a glimpse of the unknown. They're just buying a ton of different things, aren't they? You see gaming show. You see different. Oh, that was unexpected. The consecrated fires revealed cinders and shadows. But beneath it all, no monsters, no gods, only oblivion. That was almost like I got some big Skyrim vibe. Okay. Wait, is this Dark Soul, like, Rim? <laughs> Kinda looks cool. <laughs> Great value souls. Maybe. You get to play as a skull skeleton. It'll be on PlayStation and Xbox but and wait, stuff, but there's more. Yeah, I don't. The, the EGS stuff really bothers me because I'm just sick of the exclusives. Talk about bosses. I'm bosses stubborn are and lazy. A staple of this type of RPG, and in our second piece of Mortal Shell footage, we'll see a boss that isn't just a one and done threat. Instead, it's a constant adversary throughout the campaign. The Hattern is a mysterious figure who stalks the player throughout Mortal Shell. As you grow in skill and master new weapons, so will he. The clip we're about to watch shows the player's very first duel with the elusive adversary. Let's take a look. Uh, speaking of the other game name that I just mentioned, Big chunky sword hits. God, that that foley is so big. It, it's almost kind of like refreshing to actually watch some gameplay that's not cut in like a hundred different ways even if there's not really a whole lot going on it's just nice for my brain to take a fucking break for a second even though I'm still a little bit weirded out that Ridley Scott licensed the dudes from Prometheus to be in the game and they just like didn't feed them for a couple weeks That was uh, a lot, a lot. That was a lot of, uh, gameplay. Uh. 
Okay then, straight to you. Typically on the PC gaming show, we don't spend too much time talking about the Nintendo 64. But the beauty of PC gaming is that one way or another, almost all games find their way to us and are often better off for it. After giving Blade Runner and Turok the remaster treatment, Night ah. Dive Studios is now modernizing Shadow Man, a 1999 ah. cult classic. They're adding in support for 4K and widescreen plus. Shadow Man. A whole suite of cut content. I haven't thought about that in 20 classic. years. Let's take a closer look. Yes, walk into your green screen. Yeah, this was uh, a little, you know, a little game on the N64 that wasn't actually that good. Had some, like, you know, not great controls. But maybe they can make it better. Night Dive does good work. I was hoping for Turok Rage Wars and Turok 3 as, like, a single package, but, you know. Yeah, look at those N64 textures. My god. Yep. I mean, was anyone, like, a huge fan of this game? I remember hearing about it, but... Did it, did it ever have any fans, like, enough to warrant a... I, I think the Torok games that remain on the N64 would have been bigger, you know, sales and, and uh, a better pitch for a remaster. <laughs> what, LOL? Yep. I am on a first name basis Weird. with our next guest as he has been here at the PC Gaming Show six years running. From Tripwire Interactive, the president himself, it's John Gibson. Thanks so much for joining us, John. Sean, it's my pleasure. I'm so excited to be back with you again to talk about so much cool stuff happening at Tripwire. Yeah, you guys have been doing a lot of stuff and I just want to kick off by asking, talk to me about Killing Floor 2. So Killing Floor 2 just released the Perilous Plunder Summer Update. It's got four new weapons, Blunderbuss, Glock 18, Kaboom Stick, Tesla Launcher, new official map called Desolation, Space Pirate themed outfits. Jesus. Uh, we're running a seasonal event with rewards until July 7th. And right now it's free on Steam for a week so you can go play it. I also have to ask about the follow up to a game that was announced at the PC gaming show, Chivalry 2. Talk to me about Chivalry 2. So we're working with Torn Banner Studios. We're publishing, Torn Banner's developing and Chivalry 2 is coming along great. It's so fun. And we're excited to announce some big news, cross-play between the PC and the consoles, so you can hack and slash your console friends in Chivalry 2. And last, a game that has been so popular on Twitch. Talk to me about Maneater. Yeah, so we were so excited to get Maneater out the door. You know, we've, we've shown it to you guys originally in 2018. We had all that fun with uh, Frankie in the shark suit, which I'm kind of missing. <laughs> the game is doing great. People are loving it. So much fan love, so many fan videos. We're just really happy to have it out there and, and people eating lots of humans. It, it's such a funny game too. You know, I, you've talked a little bit about the, what games, uh, what has been announced from Tripwire Interactive. Mm -hmm. What's coming up next for Tripwire? So I wish we could come forward and announce an all new game and that would be great, but I'll, I can give you a few hints. So Chivalry 2, you know, is in process. It's going to be coming out in the not too distant future, hopefully. Uh, Maneater, we're taking the community feedback and we're looking at things that we can add to the game. So uh, you haven't seen the last of Maneater. And Killing Floor 2, you know, the game came out in 2015. So we're really thinking about what's next for the Killing Floor franchise. Clowns. Well, if history is any well, indicator, that didn't John, really give I'm us sure a whole lot of info. Next year's but PC thanks. gaming show with those very updates. Thanks so much for <sighs> yeah, joining us. Yeah, I'm half asleep, much, chat. Don't worry about now, it. This year's PC gaming show. I don't have already anything to say anymore. At some Epic Game Store exclusives, Mortal Shell in particular Jesus, was very fuck promising. Christ. 
But for a sense of what else there is, let's take a look at this. That's what happens when you have fuck you money and you want to butt your way into an industry. As I say, competition is good. I just don't like the way they're doing it. Oh yeah, I forgot the Tony Hawk remake is on there. DMCA must stream. DMCA must stream. Surgeon Sim 2. Ubolts. It's just a, a highlight reel of almost everything that we just saw. Like, so, so they're just showing us again. Wait, that's exclusive? to EGS or I, well we don't know probably just also releasing Yeah, there's some stuff in there that we didn't see today. Fair enough. I'm just being a jerk. You and your friends explore unique dungeons, fighting a terrifying cadre of mystical and monstrous enemies, grab valuable loot, and recover fallen heroes to expand your roster of available warriors. Blightbound will battle its way onto Steam Early Access later this year as an ever-expanding game with new maps, new heroes to add to your roster, and new loot to retrieve through free updates. Loot. My brain is just not processing. Behold, Blightbound, a cooperative dungeon crawler that tasks three heroes to venture down from their mountain refuge to face the abominations of the Blight, a mysterious and corrupting fog that enshrouds the land. Each player will choose a hero from one of three classes. Warrior. Forge Titan's might! Assassin. Let me at him. Poor mage. My greatest power awaits. Battle a terrifying horde of monstrous enemies and colossal bosses. Each class of hero fulfills a specific role on the team. Yeah, it definitely reminds me of Castle Crashers. Solve clever puzzles. Kind of looks decent. their ultimate abilities to unleash massive damage. Battle through three distinct lands, each with several dungeons to conquer, including the eerie Gravemark, the oppressive Underhold, and the precarious Blood Ridge. Steal your nerves and prepare once again to enter the Blight Warrior. Considering we never got a sequel to Castle Crashers, you know. Looks all right. Still thinking about that computer? I know I am. Slow. Oh, sorry. And now more from the PC gaming show. One thing we cherish about PC gaming is its openness. The PC is a platform where anyone can build stuff, tinker, and express themselves. And that spirit invites creators, streamers, developers, stores, and all kinds of different and influencers to contribute to PC gaming's vibrancy. We've already featured a lot of exciting independent games here today, but in rapid fire succession, here are eight more indie projects that we're excited about. Shadows of Doubt is a detective stealth game set in a fully simulated sci fi noir city. I like this. <laughs> Did I hear a, a CS80 keyboard, perhaps? <laughs> so this... I was a cold glass of water in, in Cloud Punk City. City. You fall into an ancient Roman utopia 
only to find it full of people, mysteries, and difficult moral choices. I was looking for some pasta to eat. Open world locked in time. Each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is almost up. Somebody is about to end our lives. This was a mod our for Skyrim? Is to figure out oh yeah, you can see... <laughs> Sorry, some of these facial expressions are already... You already know what will happen if you fail. Okay. Find your own truth in Paradise Killer. A first-person open-world murder mystery. Get that oblivion Play face. Play as investigation freak Lady Love dies as they explore the world, uncover the facts, and breathe life back into paradise. There's been a murder. Last night, Paradise was killed. I'm investigation freak Lady Love dies, reporting for duty. It's my job to scour the streets of paradise and hunt for evidence. Any one of these psychopaths could have done it. I think it's probably the <laughs> skeleton <laughs> man. Paradise won't be easy. When love dies, all that remains. Paradise killer. It's probably him. Haven is an RPG about the journey of two lovers and <laughs> lost planet to stay together. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Could could be anyone. <sighs> Good thing we don't have to scrub. At worst, I kill them. Whoa, you. Oh, come on. Dodge this one. Got it. You rock. You like that? That's gotta hurt. I don't know what I don't have a comment. A narrative driven drug empire simulator where you rule as a succession of fictional drug lords in a world where death and violence are inevitable. You want to sell the drug? Please make the drug empire your. Again, I, I have nothing. I got no comments anymore. I'm, I'm out of things to say Sailors for this PC gaming show. Yes! Game set in a dangerous, ruined world full of junk where you and friends must survive the Great Flood. Actually... Actually... A-K-C-S-K-U-H-U-L-E this looks like the raft, but like paper. I guess raft is now just a genre. Chris Tales is an indie yeah. Don't starve a little bit. Yeah. RPGs that lets yeah. you experience past, we'll see. present, and future simultaneously. We'll see. Frog. So what's the game? Is it... Oh, well, it's a... Uh... Alright. Set in a vibrant fantasy world created in collaboration with RPG veteran Chris Avalone, <laughs> wow, I haven't thought of the Stadia in a long time. Bringing ARPG dynamics to a new level with a skill-based gameplay inspired by great classics and modern masterpieces. Actually, that's not true. Did you hear that Gods and Monsters from Ubisoft was live on the Stadia for 30 minutes before they took it offline? You know, the Kid Icarus looking game? I think that's the, the kind of shit they should be doing. Like, get to play a game for 30 minutes, like, two months before it comes out. But...
Weird West is a curious project from the co-creators of two of our favorite games, Dishonored and Prey. Despite its top-down perspective, Weird West carries forth much of the same spirit of those first-person games laid out in a dark reimagining of the Wild West, filled with fantastical creatures. From Wolf Eye Studios and Devolver, let's take a look at Weird West. Is Will Smith and a giant mechanical spider in this game? If not, I don't want to have anything to do with it. The West. A land of opportunity. A place where you can be a hero, a scoundrel, and anything in between. This ain't quite the Wild West as you know it. There are ancient powers at war with each other. Strange entities lurking in the dead of night with their own rules and their own peculiar motives. Welcome to the Weird West. Okay. Gunman Clive. <laughs> no, it, it's, uh, I like this art style. I don't know what the fuck is going on yet, but... It's stylish. Trailer is a year old. Here it could be the best thing that ever happened to you. Oh. If you can survive, that is. Joining me to talk about Weird West is the president and creative director at Wolf Eye Studios. It's piss. Raf Colantonio. How's it going, Raf? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Coffee past I am awesome and eager to talk about this game. And I want to start with something very straightforward. What is Weird West? Weird West is an action RPG that is set in an environment that is called the Weird West. And it's very much of the kind of games that I've been working on in the past, except that the perspective is more like a isometric, top-down kind of view. Yeah, I mean, we've referenced Prey and Dishonored, and we normally think of the immersive sim as first-person games like that. What happens when you try to translate that to that? But how much more of this conference is there? There's not much different in the in the spirit. Uh, you will really find yourself at home. It's just that it's a different perspective. So instead of seeing through the eyes of the of the like player, twelve the minutes or so, oh my god, you gosh. have a chance to run a party. Right, I'll stick it out. So yeah, followers, and you have more kind of like of a strategy kind of view, uh, but the exploration and everything is, you know, is still the same kind of spirit, but with a different perspective. And, you know, in, in particular for people that maybe haven't played immersive sims, I know that the whole notion of creative problem solving is a big aspect, multiple ways to get past the same obstacle. Can you give some examples of that in Weird West? We like games where we set up an environment for you, a context, uh, there's a world, there are characters, there are objects, and all of those objects have yep. got consistent rules. And then there's an objective, which is, for That's example, games. Uh, go inside this house and frame a character by putting a letter that he did not actually truly write, but you put it there so that the, the, the sheriff can find uh -huh. it, right? You could do it in a, in a very stealthy way, which would be what you would imagine people would do. So probably uh, use a, a power and put people to sleep and then get inside. You've talked about the different things that you mm -hmm. can do as a player in the game, but who are you? What can the player do to shape who the character is over the course of the game? Right, so this is a very good question and also a very dangerous one for me. My calendar just gave me a notification yet, that says Scoot. To make it simple, you are going to play five different characters. Once the main quest is over, Scoot's the birthday character, today. you go to the next one. Now, the first one is still in the world, huh. so you can go back and recruit him or her in your party. What does death mean for you and for your companions in Weird West? It's a risk that we're taking. We're going to have different modes. There's the super hard mode where you die and, and you're dead. Is the game sort of designed what? to be like playing in one full what? timeline if someone dies? You're, you're not supposed to reload. You're supposed to continue to play within the same world? Yeah, you continue to play with the same world. But now the sad thing is that you're, that doesn't apply to your followers. Yeah, the characters that are with you, but maybe they'll come it back at you on the same day. New and you know what's going to happen. You can revive your followers if you're, if you're there and if you have the right tools with you. 
But if you don't and they die, that's it. You know, your followers are now in a little graveyard somewhere. <laughs> you make it sound cute. A precious little graveyard. Well, they will maybe come back as the undead. Yeah. yeah. Now, Raph, when can people get their hands on Weird West? So the game ships in 2021, but some of you uh, are going to have a chance to play a, a demo actually pretty soon in the incoming months. You can follow uh, Wolfi Studios on Twitter and as well as Devolver Digital on Twitter as well uh, for more information about that. Well, wonderful, Raf. Thank you so much for coming out. Once again, that is Devolver <laughs> Digital, Wolf Eye Studios on Twitter for that upcoming demo. For our next game, believe it or not, yet again, we're going to go to Frankie. Oh, well, it's all right, Sean, I guess. I don't know about you, but there are times I wish for a simpler life. A life Bloodborne as PC? A farmer in a humble JRPG village where all I have to worry about is which vegetables to plant what to name my chickens, and which of the dozen townsfolk I should propose marriage to. <laughs> Our next game is a return to that simpler life. From XC Games, this is Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. Wow, hat! The original farming simulation series? Wait, really? Looks a whole lot like Harvest Moon. These are the Harvest Moon devs. It looks like Snack World. They had to rebrand because of licensing issues. Looks, um, looks like Harvest Marvelous. Moon. That's good. I'm so happy that you've been sending in your reactions, your memes, your takes of various temperatures throughout the it show. It is Harvest Moon, it's just a different name, but it looks like it too. <laughs> you can even read them before your very eyes right now. I'm delighted by so many of them. Furious at a few, but I'm confused by none because you're just making a lot of sense today. We're in the home stretch did, of the show. Did so someone tweet Garfield Cart? <laughs> which PC games you're excited I missed about it. by using hashtag PC Gaming Show. Now, when it comes to genres, there are few as ambitious on PC as the MMO. It requires a vast amount of resources to create a rich, living, breathing world to entertain hundreds of thousands of players for years. And I know this because I watched season one of Mythic Quest. <laughs> Due on closed Ooh. beta on July 23rd, Amazon Games' New World aims to deliver that vast open world with pitched battles of 100 players. I'm excited to announce today that if you pre-order New World right now, you can get into that July 23rd beta a full month before the full release on August 25th. This is New World. So I'm not really into MMOs, we'll see. Uh, it's gonna take a pretty radical change in direction for the MMO thing in general for me to actually want to get, like, hooked to one. Just not really my thing anymore. I like Plague Doctors though, but they're cool. Definitely a fan of the Plague Doctor. Porn. So I wonder, like, tonally, okay, yeah, they're trying, there's some different stuff happening here, okay. I wonder if you just click cooldowns, or if there's, you know, an action combat thing happening. Show me what you've got! PC Gaming Show, we're big fans of Life is Strange, the award-winning adventure series from developer Don't Nod. 
Having undergone some big don't, changes don't since its not. first reveal in 2018, Twin Mirror, the studio's next game, is a psychological thriller that follows investigative mm. journalist Sam, who returns to his hometown in West Virginia. Available to wishlist now on the Epic Game Store, let's watch. Take me home, country roads. Basswood is many things. Peaceful tops that list. Until that day. You're the one in the driver's seat, Sam. I can't make you do anything. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. Just try and make sure you don't do anything stupid. I know you think that the only thing waiting for you down there is her. Ethan! You might be right. Ethan! The good news, though... Looks like if Bradley Cooper was turned into, like, a bad wax figurine from Madame Tussauds. You may have seen Metal Hellsinger announced earlier this week, and today we get the opportunity to take a closer look at this unique game that the studio bills as a rhythm FPS. Published by Funcom, you have to battle through eight hells, blasting demons to a heavy metal soundtrack. And to talk about one of the most epic encounters in the game is epic. the creative director at The Outsiders, David Goldfarb. Take it away, David. Thanks. And uh, let me say it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think right now everybody needs some games to give, give us a break from the reality that we're currently inhabiting. So uh, that's why we're here now. So what you're about to see here is an exclusive peek of some pre pre alpha gameplay um, of our upcoming game, Metal Hellsinger. Wait, maybe we can move the dude's face. Hope oh, you thanks. like it. <laughs> what a weird fucking genre shift. <laughs> Rhythm FPS. It's, yeah, it's, it's Doom with rhythm and, uh, and, you know, like Necrodancer-y, Doom-ish. It's kind of, kind of cool in some ways. Like, I'm, I'm not really, nothing today has blown me away, necessarily, but there's always, there's been a number of games where I'm like, oh, that, that could be cool. Man, I hope there's more than just one weapon. I suppose the shotgun makes the most sense for rhythm, but there's probably like rocket launchers and stuff like that. Trivium. Okay, Trivium is a pretty big man. Day here, and I play the magician in the Dungeons of Nahalbeck, the Amulet of Chaos. The Amulet of Chaos is, is that? a fun and silly tactical RPG that's coming to PC later this summer. Oh. It features a group of adventurers searching a dungeon for treasure. Each one of the characters oh, has hi, their skill sets, or lack <laughs> thereof, <laughs> uh, fighting styles, and inventory. Each one is kind of a failure, but together, they're too dumb to fail. <laughs> the game doesn't take itself too seriously. It has lots of in-jokes for tabletop games, and for some reason it features a lot of chickens. Anyway, here is an exclusive preview of The Amulet of Chaos. You play as the dumbest motherfuckers on the planet. Have fun! You again? I'd expected your asses to be turned into lampshades by now. You root! I'm pissed! Ha! Pleased to meet you, pissed! I'm Rivax. Ha ha ha, what a burn! We'll smash your rotten brains out of your skull! How about we try diplomacy, maybe? No. Attack! Guards, guards! Dispatch these smelly bushwhackers! Zibat relic, hismat! I 
I am laughing. Who says you need water to go sailing? Our next game, Red Sails, puts you on a boat in the middle of a sea of desert. In this intriguing narrative adventure, you rescue stranded people while looking for the rest of your clan. Let's take a look at Red Sails. I like uh, sand. Oh, that's not sand. Is that sand? Water sand. I like looking at it. That pleases my eyeballs. Whatever the hell else it is. So, DevBot, do you have any access to some medical programs in case I, you know, bump my foot against some of these three, three, cold, three, unforgiving walls? 3D3. Query received, Sean. In order to familiarize you with basic life-saving procedures, I have established contact with game developer Bossa Studios, the creators of Surgeon Simulator 2. Well, I wasn't really planning on doing any surgery. I feel like if I was injured, you'd be the one doing the surgery. My analysis shows that Surgeon Simulator 2 contains all of the vital instructions for repairing fragile human bodies. One hour of Surgeon Simulator 2 is equivalent to one year of human medical school. That's not true, but I appreciate your enthusiasm and thirst for knowledge, DevBot. And I'm certainly interested in this game. So let's take a look at Surgeon Simulator 2. Yeah, this is another EGS exclusive. Can I do this in VR? <laughs> Milo's checking out them feet. <laughs> Good the hands. I, I guess it's a surgeon sim where you could just walk around the whole hospital. And you can build your own hospital? What? I, I did, well, okay. That was really unexpected for Surgeon Sim. Wow. Yeah, this is a lot more than I was expecting. Multiplayer and fucking building and that kind of shit. Joining us to Four talk degrees about of freedom. Simulator Two, we got Mark Pick on the line. Mark, thanks so much for I joining us. I won't be us. playing it anytime Hello, soon, thanks, sadly. But. So, for anyone who has not experienced the hilarity of Surgeon Simulator One, can you just give us the gist and tell us <laughs> what is Surgeon Simulator Two all about? Um, we've kind of taken the tone and the heart of the original, which is that chaotic physics gameplay, and we've really kind of blown it out to brand new epic proportions. Um, so in the original game, you're just one arm kind of moving around on one table. In epic the new game, you're actually a fully a shot. limb surgeon moving around for the first time in the series on two feet. Um, in the original <laughs> game as well, uh, <laughs> yeah, right? What an innovative feature in 2020. Um, in the original game as well, you were limited to just surgery, whereas in Surgeon Simulator 2, there's a whole plethora of brand new mechanics, challenges and gameplay elements to explore. You're not just looking over one patient's chest cavity anymore, but you're actually exploring a fully fledged medical facility. Can you maybe tease a little bit of some of the other, perhaps, medical operations that I get to perform in Surgeon Simulator 2? Yeah, so there is 12 operations in the game, and you will have seen a few of those in the trailer just now. Um, think of that facility as 
like a little bit like the original Surgeon Simulator with a bit of kind of a mad scientist lab thrown in there through this kind of lens of like a Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory vibe. Like you're never really sure what's going to be around the next corner and what new <laughs> twist or what dark machinery you're going to come across next. Uh, so players are going to come across everything from like surgical vending machines, over-engineered operating theatres, automatic patient dispensers, my personal favourite, which is actually an improvised cannon where you can actually fire uh, limbs or organs and things across to your fellow surgeons on the other side of the room to keep operating on Bob. Now, Mark, I sure. understand that there is a creation tool in Surgeon Simulator 2. What does that entail? Yeah, that's right. So in keeping with the variety and the surprise that we talked about before, in Surgeon Simulator 2, we're proud to announce that we are bringing the Bossa Labs creation mode to the game. Now, in creation mode, you as a solo player or in a group of up to four players can get stuck into the very same tools that we as designers and developers use to build our very own story mode. It's an easy to use, intuitive, friendly set of tools where it's much fun to create as it is to play. So I, I want to ask, what, what are some of the examples of the types of levels, the types of creations that people have made? That's a great question. So we've been live for the last few months already. The wealth and the good variety question, of content made by players so far has been really, really incredible to see. So there's been everything in there from traditional takes on surgery, like the end of the original game. We've also got ghost ships in there. We've got bowling alleys. We've even got a take on, on the Surgeon Olympics, where people are bouncing <laughs> around the head and using that as a ball. And then we've got my personal favorite, um, which is the kind of uh, the take on the bottle flip challenge. So I don't know if you're familiar with that, oh, yeah. but where you can oh, kind yeah. of flip a bottle with the hand and kind of, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do with the surgeon simulator hand. And <laughs> you just kind of step back and see the physics chaos play out. And it's a lot of fun. It's very satisfying to see play out. Mark, I had a blast playing Surgeon Simulator 1. When can people play Surgeon Simulator 2 and how do they get access? to this creation workshop you've mentioned. Surgeon Simulator 2 is coming to the Epic Game Store in August 2020, and you can pre-order that right now. You can also go to surgeonsimulator.com for more information and follow us at Surgeon Sim on Twitter to learn more. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. It's streamer thank and you. YouTuber bait on top of all That's the other Mark cool stuff. Pitt. I'm Sean there. Plot. Let's go to Frankie Ward. Oh my god, this is going to take two and a half hours, isn't it? our next developer from their appearance in the PC gaming show way back in 2015. Hello Games are a small UK indie studio, perhaps better known for building the infinite, procedurally generated universe of No Man's Sky. Uh -oh. But their next big release is an altogether more intimate hand I think we saw this one already, right? We, we saw this. The Last this. Campfire is an adventure game, a story of a lost ember trapped in a puzzling place searching for meaning and a way home. Let's check it out. In this game, you can do everything. You can plant a tree and it literally grows years later.
Maybe it's my fault. Maybe just because I decided to stream it. Like, I'm suffering as a result. Because, <laughs> like, I can't get up. I mean, I could. I'm just making myself not get up. You know, um, and look away. <laughs> Oh, cool. Torture simulator. Surgeon Sim Gulag. Night vision device fully operational, sir. Excellent. Bring in the other subjects. I played a little. Oh, yeah. Well, that's been spoiled now. Um, I played a little bit of Outlast, and it was uh, yeah. It, it is. It is a horror game. And with that, the 2020 PC Gaming Show is now complete. First smile Thank I've had all so show. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you got the chance to see some games that excited and delighted you. Also, as you might imagine, it is really challenging to put on a show with no nearby gaming conventions. So an enormous thanks to our sponsors for helping to make this show possible. This year, the sponsors are mythical. Perfect World, Funcom, Frontier Developments, Exceed Games, Atlas, Intel, All In Games, Humble Games, Sega, Amazon Games, Merge Games, Tripwire Interactive, and the Epic Games Store. Without your support, we would not have had the opportunity to put on a show for the greatest platform, PC Gaming. Now, before I say goodbye, I want to give a warm thanks and a chance for my co-host to say goodbye. Thanks again, DevBot. I'm glad to have been of service, Sean. I'm going to shut down into sleep mode to conserve power until next year. The 3D, 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 3D goodbye message. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of our devs for your incredible games and of course a massive thanks to our sponsors for making this all happen. Greetings, and finally, greetings, big greetings. thanks to you guys at home for watching. I'm actually off with my little evil psychic now to take over the world and I really, really do look forward to being your evil emperor overlord. Until next year, thank you so much and goodbye. Bye. Bye, guinea pig. All right, that's it. Coming up next is the future games show over at twitch.tv slash gamesradar, where you'll see more exclusive reveals, deep dives on the future of gaming and developer Radio interviews. Streaming. With that, I'm Sean Day Nine Plot, and this has been the PC Gaming Show. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care. Yep. All right, chat. All right, then, Kyle. Rest in Hello, peace, world. Luke. Or rather, goodbye, world. These are the credits. Runcredits.exe. Loadcredits.bat. What can I say? Uh, I really, you know, didn't. Uh... These are the humans who helped me make the show. I don't know why humans require acknowledgement for everything. Who is that? They are not in my database. Wait until after credits. My whole head is a video. I could have been the video team. You didn't even ask me. You think so? We have one more reveal. Blade Runner, new! I contain all of the world's knowledge, but I'm still not sure what a glyph does. Look at how many people it takes to do the work of one dead bot. While you were watching this, I calculated pi to 49 trillion digits. How about you? Yeah, me too, man. Kids with their acronyms, am I right? Johnny Five is a good movie. I just hijacked all of these people's computers and found an alarming amount of Henry Cavill fan fiction. There should really be an achievement for watching this far into the credits. Huh? I am assuming direct control of these drones and announcing it out loud for some reason. Are you sure you want to quit watching? All unsafe progress will be lost. <laughs> editor, editor, editor. So many editors. Pro tip, when asking a computer to open a pod bay door, say, please. With all these sponsors, you'd think I'd have a heck of a lot more RGB. Okay, I have to go now. Shh.
show us the trailer of Monkey Ball. Monkey Ball. This album is groovy. Error. Updating dictionary. This album slaps. The nature of God does not compute. However, he would definitely sound like Wayne. Speaking of tools, could someone adjust my Omnibill server motor? Oh yeah, that's the spot. Take a picture, weirdo. It'll last longer. There will now be a short quiz, so I hope you memorized all those names. And don't forget to thank your computer for showing it to you. Show me the trailer. <laughs> the show is over. No, you may not. Initiating self-destruct sequence. Just kidding. I would never. Yeah, it's real. Oh, this is like... Crossed quality. I can't tell if game or bad deinterlace. No deinterlacing. Uh, uh, uh. It's not monkey ball. It's not Bloodborne cart. Uh, kind of looks a little bit like Dishonored mixed with beef. Wood. I don't know what that means. Dusk developers. They forgot to show the trailer during the new blood section. Oh. Luigi's Castle! My brain is fried. It's just fried. I, I don't know, I mean, it looked- that looked fine. Um, that's- that's the end of this thing. Listen, I need to go for a while. I was gonna stream Animal Crossing right after. I need to eat... like, food. And I need to go for a little while, cause holy shit. That was like almost two and a half hours, and again, I feel like it could have been cut in half. I do appreciate finding out about new games. There's a couple that looked pretty good. Uh, definitely... I mean... You know, I appreciate the devs talking about their games and explaining them too, but... Ultimately, it was just too much for me. And again, that might be my fault for streaming it, but uh, too much. I'm still really excited about Everspace 2, and most of the other games that I thought looked cool are EGS exclusive. So, I mean, I don't know. It almost feels like E3. Just trying to get a little bit of that E3 magic. <laughs> Anyhow we can. Oh. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will be back at some point soon with Animal Crossing. And maybe just Animal Crossing. And uh, we'll do Scoot's birthday. So, goodbye. Until later, if you want to watch some other streamers, you can just wait here for the, uh, you know, auto hosts. And that'll take you to some other streamers until I get back or until whenever. So, take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, thank you for allowing me to, uh, you know, do the commentary. Bye.